Hello traders, it is Wednesday evening, April 29th, and it is time for our weekly swing trading video. Quite an exciting week for the market. We've got it advancing. It's getting above major resistance areas. I'm going to go into the weekly chart. We're going to see where that 100 week moving average came into play at the 288 level. That was our first target. You can see how the market's been able to rise above it. And today the action was particularly strong. So we're going to go back to that daily chart. I'm going to highlight a couple of things that I've noticed. First of all, today we had a really nice rally after what seemed to be a bearish engulfing pattern. I'm going to take the buy and sell arrows off the chart so that you can see this better. We had a nice little rally through that 288 level and the market gapped higher yesterday and it sold off the entire day almost giving us a bearish engulfing pattern it looked like we could see more follow through selling today except google came out with excellent earnings yesterday revenues up 13 percent we expected that social media is in the right place at the right time during the coronavirus people are home they're surfing the internet more i expected google to do well in fact I expected all of the major mega cap tech stocks to do well. That's going to fuel this rally. Optimism is going to get overextended. We may get up to this major moving average here at the $300 level on the SPY. You can see how both the 100-day and 200-day moving averages are converging on that price point. I think that as we get closer to it, we're going to see the headwinds really blow. And after this week, all the really big mega cap tech stocks will have reported and i think that's when some of the excitement will leave the market we'll see if i'm right we certainly can't short just yet we can try a few out of the money bearish call spreads but buying puts absolutely not i'm going to draw an upward sloping trend line an alert line and i'm going to pick a couple of points out that i think will work well that low right there and that low right there and you can see how that upward sloping trend line is extending. It comes into play right at the 288 level. So as the market continues to move higher, we cannot short until we have a technical breakdown. This was a horizontal support level. That was the 100 week moving average. Now we have an upward sloping trend line intersecting that level. If by chance we see the market run up and really back off hard before next Wednesday, then I may send an alert to buy some puts. But until then, we have to stick with the game plan, which is to focus on selling out of the money bullish put spreads. And I've got a bearish call spread that we're going to try in there as well. But it's still early, very, very early for us to be calling a market top here and to getting short. So there are some fundamental issues in the marketplace right now. And... I'm seeing some credit issues on the consumer level. HSBC took a big write down. We saw the same from JP Morgan Chase. They took a massive write down. They expect that Q2 is going to be even worse than Q1. I saw a recent poll where it said that half of the people are not going to be able to make their May rent payment. Not a good situation. A lot of people living paycheck to paycheck. That's why we have the PPP stimulus program. I believe that when they go back on the job, their employers are going to hire them. They're going to use the loan for the from the government. That's basically a transfer payment from the government to workers. But if you're going to work and you're not seeing the foot traffic and you're not seeing the orders come in, you're going to be wondering how secure your job is when that PPP stimulus runs out. Hence, you're not going to be spending a lot of money. But the market is pricing in a nice full-blown recovery I don't think it's going to be that easy. And we're seeing an awful lot of optimism because we've got these major mega cap tech stocks that are reporting earnings. They're all doing really, really well. Guess what? After the close today, we had Facebook report earnings. Off the charts. Stock is up 20% after hours. Huge rally. And we've got Microsoft knocking the cover off the ball. Big rally. Facebook, another social media company. Everybody's home, they're surfing social media. Microsoft, they benefited from cloud computing. They also have a lot of game consoles that they sell. So Microsoft doing exceptionally well. Amazon tomorrow after the close. 
Gee, I wonder if they're going to do well in this environment. Of course they are. They can't even keep up with orders right now. Everybody's at home using their home delivery service. We also have Apple tomorrow. I think Apple could have a little bit of difficulty from both a supply chain standpoint and from the standpoint that consumers are going to be pretty tight in purchasing new phones. But all the companies that are reporting right now, they're only getting maybe a few weeks of weakness due to the coronavirus at the very tail end of the quarter. Now that's going to change. If you go out a week or two weeks and you start looking at the companies that report in the back half of Q1 earnings season, now those companies are going to have a lot more exposure to the coronavirus because they'll be including an extra two, three weeks into that earnings report. And so I think that once the air is let out of the balloon here, we are going to see some weakness. As we start getting into May, we'll see how the rollout goes. Right now, everyone's projecting a nice, quick, smooth rollout. States are starting to open up their economies. South Carolina, Texas, Tennessee, Alaska, Georgia. Yeah, everybody's going to open things back up. However, you don't hear much about Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, New York. All of them have extended their shutdown. So that's going to be a problem. We're hearing from Las Vegas that the casinos may not open until phase three or phase four, very, very late in the whole shutdown process, the reopening, if you will. And that makes sense to me. You can't operate a restaurant and have one third capacity. It doesn't work. They need economies of scale during lunch, during dinner, that restaurant better be packed. The margins are so low, that's the only way that the restaurant industry is designed to work. You've got huge fixed overhead, and you've got food that spoils, you've got a lot of payroll and overhead expenses. You can't make money if you've got a third of your restaurant filled and everybody is social distancing. So, that's going to be a really, really big problem. Now, this is a microcosm of the entire economy. I think you're seeing the best of the best reporting earnings right now. Everybody's going to be super excited with Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Netflix, and they're going to build all that excitement into the S&P 500 and expect that it's all systems go. It's just not true. The other 95% of the S&P 500, those companies are going to be struggling. And I think that we're going to see that news in Q2. And also, I think we're going to see that this reopening is really dragging along. And that's not good. It's not good from a credit standpoint, which incidentally, I am starting to see some credit issues, uh, primarily in Europe. Europe is now accepting junk bonds as collateral from their banks. BBB minus. So in other words, we'll take anything you got just to give you cash because we know that you need it to stay afloat. U.S. banks, not in nearly as bad a shape because they took massive write downs a decade ago. They didn't do that in Europe. Also seeing some issues on the municipal front. Municipal uh, bonds are being purchased by the Fed to the tune of $500 billion. But they're saying, listen, you need to go to the banks first to seek financing. We've got property taxes that are going to be due in the next month or two, at least in the states that I'm aware of. A lot of them are going to be coming due, and I don't think people are going to have the money for it. How do municipalities deal with that shortfall? We'll see. So this is not going to be off to the races. This huge decline and the speed of that decline came for a reason. And right now we are at the halfway point of this high and this low. So I think we're going to have equilibrium. I don't think that asset managers are going to be go-go anxious to get long the market right here. Another factor that we have that's going to be an influence in the course of the last 10 years, corporations have been issuing cheap debt and they've been using the proceeds to repurchase shares. They are preserving cash right now. They're cutting dividends and they're stopping their share repurchase programs. Well, what's that going to do? It's going to remove some of the bid that we have in the market. So I see that as just another reason 
that the market's going to have an easier time pulling back. Are we going to retest the lows? I don't know. An easy support level would be SPY 262.50. That's about halfway between this low and this high right now. And that was the cup and handle formation. And that was the breakout that we saw about two and a half weeks ago. I think that's a natural retracement level. Do we go further below that? Who knows? I have no idea how long this uh, rollout is going to take. The reopening, I don't know if consumers are going to open their wallets back up. We'll only know with time. And if credit issues start to pop up, we will easily test the low of the year. But we don't know that right now. I hope that everything goes perfectly. The market is pricing that in right now. They are pricing in that everything is going to resume back to normal and we won't miss a beat. Except for the fact that we've got six trillion dollars in debt that we've added to our country's national debt. So let's hope that the plan works and we needed to have that stimulus. If we didn't have all the stimulus, the market would not be where it is now and we would have had some serious, serious problems. We would have been taking major, major pain and we probably would have still been going down if there were no stimulus. So in any event, We've got to take a look at the earnings that are coming out right now. The problem that I have is that these companies are the strongest of the strongest and they have not been impacted by the coronavirus and in many cases they have even benefited from it. But that's not representative of the other 95% of the companies. They've only been impacted for a few weeks. Q2 is going to be much weaker. And here's the kicker. Many companies are not providing guidance. So there is no clarity. We don't know what to expect. They don't know what to expect. So they're not going to be investing in plant and equipment when they have no idea of what's going to be happening. So I see this rally as coming to an end fairly soon. But that does not mean that we start going out and buying puts in anticipation of that happening because the market can exceed expectations on the downside it can exceed expectations on the upside we must wait for technical breakdowns and that is a big mistake that novice traders make. They start getting early with the trade. They think this is a great shorting opportunity. The next thing you know, we rally up to major resistance. Oh, well, this is what I was waiting for. I'm buying puts in here. Then the market continues to surge higher and they take massive losses. We have to wait for that breakdown, just like in here. Right in here, this looks like a beautiful, beautiful short. The coronavirus is coming into play. I'd made mention of it to everyone. We got this nice little drop. Looked like everything was going to get going, and it didn't. In fact, we rebounded and made a new all-time high. But once that breakdown happened, once we took out this horizontal support level, that was the technical breach that we needed. And then getting short was easy. We have to wait for the same thing this time around. So I think that for the next week, week and a half, two weeks, we still have some upside left to this market. And we don't want to fade market momentum that's this strong. So I'm going to be focusing on bullish put spreads this week. I've got one bearish call spread, but we're going to keep it very, very short in duration. May 8th is the expiration cycle that we're going to be focusing on. I think the market holds its bid very well. We're going to be focusing on companies that have reported earnings, and we're going to be taking advantage of that strength. So let's take a look at what we've got from last week, and we'll knock through this list very quickly. We had DE was a short that we liked, and we were looking to sell a May 152.50, 155 bearish call spread. No fill. Couldn't get filled on it, unfortunately. The stock floundered around and floundered around, and the premiums started to get sucked out of those options, and that's okay. We knew that we would need an immediate pop to have a chance at getting filled at it. So DE is going to come off the list. We have no order. Cancel that one. KO was a bearish call spread. Look at how sluggish 
this stock has been. Coca-Cola has not rallied and it's having a really hard time advancing. This will be a really nice bearish call spread for us. Well, Pete, how can I know when it's time to short KO? Well, here's an easy way. You come into Option Stalker. You click on that bar right there. You click on that bar right there. Notice I use the GTC line. This is a good till cancel upward sloping trend line. When it's breached, I'll know that it's time to look at Coca-Cola. John Deere, I can do the same thing. If I come in here, I click GTC. I can click on that candle. You can draw these trend lines in whatever fashion you want. Pick two points that give you a nice line. This will keep going higher and higher. And when DE finally does roll over, I'm going to know about it because this trend line is going to be violated. Incidentally, I'm using Option Stalker right now. Everything that I show you tonight is available on Option Stalker. This is the type of research as a swing trader that you can be doing every day. So, Coca Cola coming off, John Deere coming off, PayPal. We wanted to sell an out of the money bullish put spread below that 200 day moving average. And it came out, uh, the video came out here. Never got that little bit of a dip that we needed to get that spread off, unfortunately. But we were correct on our assumption that PayPal was going to move higher. So that's going to be removed. ROST, we did a bearish call spread. We were selling the 85 call in May. May 15th expiration because they only have normal expiration and we bought the May $90 call. You can see the stock is at $97 so it is in the money right now. Am I worried about it? No, this is a binary trade. We expected that we we're going to take heat on it. We knew the market still had some upward momentum. This is a retailer. They've been closed for business. They are not reopening yet. So a lot of optimism built in. Stock is rallying with the market. As soon as the market starts to roll over, I believe you're going to see retail stocks get nailed and the stock will roll over. So we've still got about three weeks left before option expiration. We're going to stick with the position. We'll see how the trade plays out, but we got a really nice hefty credit for it. So we'll have about an 85% winner if it pans out for us, but if it loses, we're going to lose everything that we put into the trade. So it's kind of a 50-50 trade. My assumption on that trade back here was that is uh, ROST going to finish higher or lower than this point if I look forward four weeks? And the assumption was I feel that there's a much greater probability that it's going to drop than it's going to rally. So with that in mind... If I feel the probability that it's going to fall is greater and I'm able to do something close to 50-50 risk return, that's why the trade would make sense. So I still feel that we're not out of the woods on this one yet, meaning I still think there's a chance for the stock to pull back. You can see major resistant level resistance levels up here. The market's been in such a strong rally, and I put the SPY up, that you can see the stock has participated in this part of the rally right here, but it's just trying to get through that resistance level. And yesterday we had a huge spike up in the stock and you could see an inverted hammer. So there was a lot of selling during the course of the day yesterday and a doji today. I think we're going to be okay on ROST. Maybe it's wishful thinking, but uh, that is the one bearish position that we have on right now. Snap I put in here simply because we sold a $15 put and bought a $14 put for a, actually we sold the 15 and bought the 1450 put and we did that spread for a 10 cent credit and that expired last week Friday, but I wanted to include it because we had done the trade earlier in the week. That was a nice winner for us. So Snap is also going to come off of our table. Now, before I continue into this week's picks, uh, I'm going to very quickly go to the trade screen and we're going to take a look at some of the trades that we need to take off of our staged order screen because we've had some winners. So I want to make sure that I'm maintaining this and I'll keep them up until I can do the video just to show you what has 
uh, what's going to be coming off. I've already gone through the trades from the 22nd that we didn't get filled on. We're keeping Ross up here, but we're canceling PayPal, DE, Coca-Cola, Snapchat. Those are all coming off. We've got others that are coming off as well. Last week, our Disney bearish call spread expired worthless, so we made we maxed out on it. We made a lot, of, well, made a decent amount of money on that. That was a good trade. Uh, we also had a, a scroll down. I'm looking for those uh, April expirations, and I'm not seeing any more of them up here. I know we had a couple of other Aprils, but I can't seem to find them right now. And I'm going to be removing them in any case. I will take a quick look and see if I can find it in my notes. Uh, we had, uh, let's see, Pepsi was another one. That was an out-of-the-money bearish calls, excuse me, an out-of-the-money bullish put spread that we saw. That one also worked out. So I'm not able to see it offhand in here, but you won't see that one in there any longer as well. So as these start to come off, uh, there it is, I'm sorry. It was the Pepsi April 24 100 put that we sold for a dollar. That expired worthless last week. That was an excellent trade for us also. So we've had a number of nice winners. The only problem that we've had really in the last month and a half is this ROST trade that we're in currently. Every other trade that we've done has been a winner and we've had a ton of them. So let's see if we can build on that track record. You're going to see some of the stocks that we're highlighting this week, and I've got them right here. If you take a look at the staged order screen, you'll see some of the trades that we're going to be trying to get into today. Uh, I've got five of them, so let's start at the top. And I'm going to first create a list. I'm going to go in. I'm going to click Create in the lists, and we're going to name this one April 29. And the stocks that I'm going to be highlighting, Facebook, Netflix, Valero, VLO, Google, and Starbucks. Let's save and close. And then we're going to go through each one of these. We're going to take a look at why we like these trades. Well, Facebook just blew the cover off the ball today. It's through the 100-day moving average. You can see how it poked through the 100-day and 200-day moving average today. The stock is up, I believe, about $25 after the close. So it is really running up. What will it do tomorrow? Do we know if it's going to be able to hold those gains? We don't know. However, after a strong earnings report like that, that stock is going to have lots of buyers in it for quite a while, at least a week and a half. And we're going to be banking on that. And we're going to be trying to sell a bullish put spread. And we're going to try and take advantage of inflated option implied volatilities tomorrow on the open. Well, Pete, how are we going to know where the stock is going to open? Pete, how are we going to know where that put spread is trading? We don't know any of these things. No, we don't. And we're going to try and get this spread off during all the chaos when the stock opens tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we are going to sell, and I'll show you the staged order, and then we'll go into the order entry screen. We're going to sell a Facebook May 8th, 195 put, and we're going to buy a Facebook May 192.50 put, and we're going to try and do that for a 35 cent credit. Now, I didn't put this at a $2.50 credit because I want you to be able to enter this trade right away by clicking Submit. Today, we have to have these orders working on the open. Before the open. Before the open. Those of you who place these trades before the open have a chance of getting filled. If you wait, I want to see how the stock opens. I want to watch the market for a little bit. You're not going to get filled. It's that easy. So, could you have gotten a better fill if you waited? Maybe, but there's a really good chance that you won't get filled at all. We've got options that are expiring in a week and two days. 
So those premiums are not going to be there very long at all. And I am expecting a rally tomorrow morning. I'm expecting the S&P 500 to be up after gangbuster earnings this afternoon. So we're going to go in and let's click on the trade button and take a look at that. And we're going to go into the Facebook. May 8 expiration. And I'm going to go down to the 195s and the 192.50s. You can see that's where the 100-day moving average is. Click on that. Click on that. And you can see that spread is currently 45 bid offered at $2.15. When that stock opens tomorrow, $25 higher, it's not going to be there. We are just going to try and get $0.35 cents for it. So hopefully we'll have a shot at getting filled. It's less than the $0.50 cents I'm normally looking for, but we've got such a big surge in the stock after the close today that I think $0.35 cents might be doable. It's still going to net us about a 16% return in the course of a week and two days. So really nice return on that spread if we can get filled. So let's go back into the staged order screen. And by the way, I mean, Facebook is a social media company. Even if the shutdown lingers a little bit longer than expected, this is the kind of company that's doing well during the shutdown. So if it gets extended, no problem. We want to take advantage of that surge after hours. And the next play is going to do the same for us. It's Google. Google reported earnings yesterday. Revenues were up 13%. Figured it was going to be good, right? So you've got the, and Q2, they did mention that Q2 was going to be soft relative to Q1 for exactly the reasons I mentioned. Not that much of Q1 was impacted by coronavirus, but it will be much more considerable in Q2. So we've got a really nice horizontal resistance level here, and we've got our 200-day moving average. You can see where that comes into play right around that 1280 price point. So we're going to try and leverage that and get a little bit below that if we can. So I'm going to bring up the staged order screen and you can see Google. We're going to try and sell the May 8, 1240 put and we're going to buy the May 8, 1235 put and we're going to try and do that for a dollar credit. So let's go into the trade screen. Let's put up Google. First, I'm going to get all the trades done today. Then we'll go in and I'll show you how I found some of them. Very, very easy to do. Some really good features that you should be taking advantage of right now during earnings season. So we're going to go down and you can see that this line here is the one standard deviation move, which is always nice to sell premium below that level. And I'm going to click here and I'm going to click here. And you can see that that spread, it's a negative $1 offered at 375 so for us to try and get a dollar, we're bid side. So hopefully we'll have a chance to get that done. If we don't get these trades done, we're not going to sweat it. We're going to wait for the market to start hitting some resistance. And then we'll have perhaps some better bearish call spreads that are lining up. I'm not overly anxious to get trades done right now. If I can get them done at my price, fantastic then I want in. If I can't get my price, I'm not going to for, uh, force it. So Google is the second one. And I'm going to go down to the next trade here. And I did enter these trades, by the way. I tried to place these trades. I'm doing one contract so that I know if we get filled. I don't want to compete with your orders. So I put one contract out there just to give me an idea if that spread is something that we can fill on. Now here you've got Netflix, and you can see that they announced after hours, they announced excellent earnings. They had lots of new subscriptions, I believe 16 million new subscribers, if I recall correctly. And you can see how the stock has been in a gradual downtrend. It has been weak relative to the market. Pete, why the heck are we doing a trade on this? Look, 
Relative strength, relative weakness. This is relative weakness. We're supposed to stay away from these. And you would be right in that assumption. I believe that Netflix is pulling back because there's a rotation out of stocks that have been relatively strong and it's going into the laggards. And I haven't really talked too much about that either. So let me backtrack for just a second. When I start to see GM and Hilton Hotels and Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, all these stocks that are going to be decimated by the coronavirus rallying, the street calls that the dogs are barking. And when the dogs are barking, it tells me that we're close to a market that's going to be hitting resistance. If the market starts to roll over a little bit, you're going to see money flow right back into a stock like Netflix. It's held up really, really well. It's got a great business model for this type of market condition. I feel that it's going to come back and check that $390 level. We're not going to be hanging out in this stock very long. A week and two days, we're going to take advantage of this little pullback, and we're actually going to come down below that horizontal support level. So that's what we're leaning on is that horizontal support, and it would have to come below it for us to be in danger. So that's the rationale behind Netflix. And we're going to be selling an out-of-the-money bullish put spread. So let's go in and we'll put up the trade screen. Bring up Netflix. And so again, we're selling here the 382.50 put and we're buying the 380 put. So lots of cushion in here. We've got the stock closing today at $411. So it'd have to go down to 382.50. That's a big drop. And I think given the backdrop with the market right now and still some bullish fuel left in the tank for the next week or so, we should be fine on this one. I'm not looking for any big market decline. So we're going to take a look at that spread. We'll go into the trade screen and we're going to go to the May 8th expiration and we're going to go down to that 382.50 strike. And a 382 strike, excuse me, 382.50 strike. Going to sell that. We're going to buy the 380 strike doing the May 8th expiration. You can see that here. And we're going to be doing that for a credit of, normally I'd be looking for a 50 cent credit. We're going to be trying to do this for a 35 cent credit. We've got to get a little bit less in because we're only a week and two days from expiration. You can see that that spread is a negative 19 cents bid offered at 70 cents. I think we'd be able to get filled if all things remained constant right now, but I think we're going to have a rally tomorrow on the open. So I, I think we're going to need to go for less than 35 cents. I mean, I think we're going to need to go for less than 50 cents. That's why I'm using 35 cents. We did see some weakness in Netflix. We've got a little bit of a pullback in the stock like this. So I'm not looking for Netflix to be off to the races right away. And I'm going to put up that chart. And you can see how the stock actually, with the market gapping higher, the stock had gapped lower. But it did finish quite well. We had some market selling in the last 15, 10 minutes of the trading session today. And Netflix pulled back along with the market but it held those gains pretty well today i like that trade i feel really good about that one next trade i'm going to go to vlo i'm going to skip starbucks for a second they also announced earnings you know i love vlo i have loved vlo from this huge market decline we were selling naked out of the money puts on it as i mentioned to you i said anytime you get a chance to buy refiners on the cheap do it there haven't been new refineries built in the last two decades. No one wants them in their backyard. They're messy, they're dirty, they're stinky. So nobody's building refineries. That means that they continue to operate and make money with their largest input cost, oil dropping like it has. These guys are going to continue to make money as soon as everybody gets back on the road. They'll be off to the races. So basically, refiners are not so much a play on oil. What they do is they take the oil, they refine it, and the spread that they make is the difference between the price of gasoline and the price of oil. And they're able to work that spread because there are only so many of them. To me, 
This is a long-term no-brainer investment until electric cars dominate the scene and you know you see more than a quarter of the cars on the road are electric okay that that would change the backdrop dramatically but that's not going to happen for a long time so for right now i like the 60 dollars price point right here you can see how the stock rallied all day i want to buy this stock for 60 dollars well what does that mean that means i'm willing to sell a naked put and we don't have to wait long for that to happen so i'm going to bring up the option chain we're looking at that may 8th expiration we're going to go down to that 60 dollars strike price and i'm going to have to go out to may 15th because i don't like that price right there so i'm going to close that and go to may 15. and if we go out to the may 15 so we're going to have this trade on for two weeks and two days not a long time I want to sell that $60 put naked and I want to get a $1.20 for it. If I can, then I'm going to make a 10% return because I like to put up 20% of the strike price. That would be $12 and I'll bring in a $1.20. That's a 10% return in a little more than two weeks. I am way good with that kind of return. So can I spread it? Can I do something out of the money? Can I create a bullish put spread you can do whatever you want okay this is my trade you can do your own trade and decide how you like to approach it and what you'd like to do i want to be short the 60 dollar put i can see the, um, the bid ask spread on a lot of options is super wide look it's 43 cents wide here on a 58 dollar put so i don't want to be messing around trying to middle this and trying to get somebody to execute something if I have a single leg option right now, I can bang a bid. I can get a trade done very, very easily. As soon as I got to start working a spread order, my bid or my offer is no longer represented in the open market for somebody to hit. Spreads aren't represented in the open market. So I want to sell this for $1.20. I think we'll be able to do even better than that because Valero is a fairly volatile stock it moves around and so if the stock pulls back we are buying that stock at sixty dollars there is no stop on this position we're going to be willing buyers and if we get assigned we're going to take assignment on the stock we're going to sell a call against it so that is the game plan for vlo now i've got one more stock that i want to highlight and this will be our first bearish call spread and we need to put a high price out there because we have a market rally and we want the stock to rally and we want to protect ourselves in the event that Starbucks goes up to that 200-day moving average at $80. We want to take advantage of that type of move. So I'm going to put up the staged order screen. You'll be able to see the trade we're doing. In this case, we're going to be selling the Starbucks May 8, $82 call, buying the May $83 call, and we're going to be doing that for a $0.17 cent credit. So again, a little bit less than a $0.20 cents we're wanting. Starbucks doesn't move a lot, and they came out with earnings today, and the earnings were not that great. Their, short, their stores in China were shut down. Their stores in the U.S. largely shut down, except for carry out windows for coffee, people not going to work. Same store sales down 11%, and I believe that the worst of it is yet to come here in the U.S. So we're going to go to the May 8 expiration. We're going to be down to that $82 strike price. We're going to click on that bid, and we're going to click on the ask of the $83 calls right there. And you can see that the spread is $0.02 cents bid, Offered at 19 cents. Well, Pete, we're trying to get 17 cents. That's almost the ask. Yeah, we are not going to sell this unless we get our price. And I feel that there's a big market rally coming tomorrow. I still think there's some upside potential. I want to see that big pop tomorrow in Starbucks. And hopefully we'll be able to get filled on this at our 17 cent limit. And then we're going to be leaning 
on this $80 moving average here. We do not want to see that stock over $80. And as we get closer to the money with our spreads right now, here's the way that I'm going to be managing them. Everyone gets an alert when I send out my weekly swing trading video. So I'm going to send out an email alert if we need to stop out any of these positions. But basically, here's how I like to handle my trades. I do get this question a lot. So I make sure that my short strike price is above a major technical resistance level here when I'm doing a bearish call spread. If the stock closes, not intraday, if it closes above that major moving average, then I need to buy back my spread. And in this particular case, it would be $82, which is well above that 100-day moving average. So I'm still out of the money. But then we would have to buy back that spread, call it a day, it's a loser. And the same holds true for Netflix, Google, Facebook. In every one of those trades, I showed you that resistance or that support, and that's what we're leaning on. And if that is violated, then we need to close the trade down. But instead of putting all that information into this video, just know that if we need to get out of a trade, I will send you an alert after the market closes and you'll know that the next day you need to take action on it. Until you get that email alert, don't worry about the trade. Now, if you want to exit it on your own, absolutely feel free to do that. It's your trade. If you don't like what's happening with the underlying, you can exit the trade on your own. So that's how we're going to be handling stops. Now let's go in and spend the last few minutes talking about how I find these trades. So I'm going to go into custom search and when I bring that up, there are lots and lots of earnings tools that you can use. In fact, I posted a video just this week that showed you a lot of the different searches that we have available to us. Here's a really nice one that I hope you use. So I can come in and I can, let's say that you're doing after hours analysis. You just got home from work and you think, gosh, this is earnings season. I think I can really find some nice plays to take advantage of. So you come in and you go, let's see at, uh, let's see which companies posted earnings today. So I click posted earnings today. And I need to have some good option liquidity. So let's go with an option liquidity of zero. Zero or higher. I want to be pretty open with uh, my search. There's a list of all the companies that posted earnings today and that have good option liquidity. Well, let's see. You know, I'm looking for a bullish put spread. So let's make sure that that stock was greater than the prior day's high. Hey, look at that. I've just narrowed my list down considerably. So that's how you would go about doing it. And these are going to be some excellent, excellent candidates for you. So I'm going to remove this. And another thing that you can do is you can go back, <clears throat> excuse me, take a look at earnings date previous. All right, let's click that. Now let's say that I just want to go back and see who's reported so far this week. Okay, I've got a lot of stocks to choose from. Well, I'm looking for bullish put spread, so let's also make sure that I have some relative strength. Strength versus SPY on a daily basis. Yeah, that would be a good one to use. Okay, there's another nice list that I can use. Very, very easy to run these types of searches. So another resource that you have available to you is the scanner. And in the scanner, I can go and I can click bullish and I can take a look at strong after earnings. This is gonna be a big list and it's going to continue to grow. So if you wanna narrow this list and you're really just looking for stocks that have recently announced in the last day or two, you wanna use that custom search that I showed you. That'll be the best method for you. And also, instead of just using the criteria that I showed you, you can mix it up. You don't have to have strength versus SPY. Perhaps you're just looking for overall 
strength in the underlying, you could put ADX for H2. Let's see what comes up if we do that. That's going to give you a nice narrow list of stocks that have been trending higher after the number and that have reported recently since Monday. In fact, let's take a look at a couple of these I hadn't even taken a look at. MMM, I would not like simply because it's an industrial stock. And this could be a really nice resistance level. This could be a very nice bearish call spread when the time is right. Well, how will we know that? Mm, I'm going to pick out a point here. If MMM can get below this open right here, I'm interested in it as a short. So once I look at a chart like this, drop those alert lines. It's going to pay off big time for you because you're going to have pop-up alerts when you log into your computer and you're going to go, holy cow, I'm glad I dropped that one. That's a really good trade. PFE, we'll take a look at that. That's actually been grinding higher, but you can see that it's got some resistance in here. Bullish put spread below these major moving averages. Mm, perhaps. It doesn't move a lot, so you're not going to get a lot of credit for it. I'm also seeing a little bit of weakness in some of the drug companies. They've been super, super strong recently. Siri got up through this horizontal resistance level. Pretty choppy. I want to see nice, steady, predictable price action. So nothing really going there. And then we've got VLO. So anyway, I wanted to take a quick look at those to see if there was anything else that came up. But this strong after earnings search is excellent. These companies have all announced in the last couple of weeks. Now I can put up, show me ones that have had a buy signal on a daily basis. And I can really uh, zoom in on this list and find out where the real strength is. So that's another way that you can find these searches or excuse me, find these stocks. So those are your picks for tonight. I think that we've got a decent chance of getting maybe two or three of those done. I don't want to be super aggressive right here because I feel that the market's going to start hitting some resistance. I'm already seeing signs of it. When you get all these dojis in here like this, it tells me that there's equilibrium setting in. And now we're getting some earnings news, but no clarity, no guidance. And we've got the best of the best companies reporting in the next couple of days. That optimism is going to be sky high. It's going to get us up to these major resistance levels, perhaps. And then I think we start to see some weakness. But it won't be until May when the shutdown lingers on, the rollout's not going as fast as, po as we had expected. You start to hear some credit concerns surfacing, whether it's from certain industry groups, so forth and so on. That's the type of news that's going to really impact the market. Maybe the coronavirus stops, starts popping up here and there. Those are the things that will force the market to roll over and everybody's going to be going, okay, this bounce is done. I'm taking some chips off the table. I'm going to be selling. I'm going to be taking profits. We'll let the market come in and then I'll look for my next re-entry point. That's what I feel is going to be happening. Not right now, but in another week, we'll start to see that selling pressure and that selling pressure will accelerate probably two, three, four weeks out from now. And when it does, then I'll have a lot more confidence selling out of the money, bearish call spreads, on some of these laggards that have recently popped that have horrible fundamentals going forward for at least the next quarter or two. That's it for tonight. If you're watching this video on YouTube, please go back, check every one of these picks, see how they've performed. You're going to be seeing this video two days after it's released. So I release it to members on Wednesday night. I release it to YouTube Saturday morning. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of these videos. Thanks so much. Let's see how the big earnings come out tomorrow from Amazon and Apple. They should be good. Should see a little bit of positive market action yet. Thank you. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. 
I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.